honey badgers, great white sharks, saltwater crocodiles. You can all go home. Wolverine has entered the chat. What these predators lack in size, they more than make up for in pure audacity. Hello! You're wanting to get as close as possible to a Wolverine, first woman ever, to do this. I'm going in Here, I got with it. a Wolverine. That touch is ours. Can I? Ferocious, furry, and fearless, this is the king of chaos, the Wolverine. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufo. This is a Wolverine, and you're watching Animal Logic. Today, we are in the Yukon, looking for one of the world's most elusive and relentless predators, the Wolverine. Years ago, in our first season, we talked about Wolverines. But since we got the opportunity to see them up close, we had to take another look. Right now, I'm following some footprints, and I can only assume that those belong to a wolverine. The footprints of a wolverine don't look anything like a coyote or a wolf. They look a little bit more like a bear print. Obviously, a little bit smaller. Yeah, you can see how there's two, two trails here. Now, I bet you anything that if this was a coyote and a wolverine, the wolverine was probably the one chasing the coyote. I put my money on that. Wolverines are very elusive creatures, and seeing one in the wild is incredibly difficult. So we decided to head down to Alaska to meet the man who's best friends with one. Whew, well, we've made it to the Kroshal Wildlife Center in Alaska. The guy who runs this place, Steve Kroshal, is kind of a local celebrity within the Yukon and Alaska. He's known as the Wolverine Man. I really want to know why that is. And I think we're going to find out. Hello! Hi! Hi! Don't move! Hi! Oh, that's why. This is Jasper, a Wolverine that Steve has raised in captivity since 2008. This is the sixth litter of Wolverines that I've had in 40 years. They're very hard to propagate in captivity. You have to go back and the bloodlines were rescues from trappers in the Arctic. So how many generations of captive wolverines does he come from? Oh, it would have to be two, two, at least two, yeah. At first glance, you might mistake the wolverine for a small bear, but really they're more closely related to weasels. They belong to the Mustelidae family, alongside fellow cutthroat cuties like badgers, otters, pine martens, and ermines. Much like everyone's favorite X-Men, wolverines are native to Canada, but they can also be found across boreal forests and tundras of the US and Eurasia. Which means they need to survive freezing cold, high latitude temperatures. And after millions of years of evolution, they're not just surviving, they're thriving. Just look at those coats. Their thick, oily fur is hydrophobic, meaning it repels water. That's right, the wolverine is waterproof. Talk about a real superpower. Without this ability, the snow or the blood of their prey would wet their skin and accelerate heat loss. In the Arctic, moisture can be deadly. Their paws are large and furry and act as snowshoes to prevent them from sinking too far into the snow. These murder mittens are equipped with semi-retractable claws that they use for climbing, digging, scaring away predators, and the occasional villain. Their scientific name is Gulo Gulo, which is Latin for glutton, and they live up to that. They'll eat anything that they can get their paws on, from plants and berries, to mice and rabbits, to elk and moose. Even carrion is on the menu. Ah, delicious carrion. All the yummy meat without the pesky time and energy spent hunting. Clever wolverines have been known to drive away much larger animals, such as wolves and cougars, and take over eating the carcass of their prey. Sorry, but the wolverine isn't here to make friends. 
Wolverines will defend their meals by any means necessary, and whatever they can't finish in one sitting is claimed by spraying it with a strong, stinky musk and burying it for later. Yum! Can you help me build a winter kill moose carcass scenario? Absolutely. Where do we start? This is a real moose. We're just Here, putting it together like Mr. Potato. Grab that yeah. antler over there too, Danielle. Yeah. It's heavy. Hind feet, front feet from a single moose. These are hind feet. That is front foot. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Like middle of the body. This is just a dislocated leg. I'm burying parts of a moose carcass, trying to make it look like a moose that died by avalanche. Because that's exactly what wolverines are looking for. Carcasses that have been dead and frozen in the ground for some time. For the record, I didn't kill the moose, okay? It was hit by a car, and now it gets to be a part of the food chain. This is literally the opposite of what I do with the ROM. Over there, I take the bones out of the ground. Right now, I'm putting them in the ground. Does that look good? Does this look like a moose that died by avalanche? We got Steve here putting the icing on the moose as a final touch. Oh yeah, I'm really starting to believe this. Just start pounding away on that moose carcass. <laughs> That's it. Summon my inner wolverine. Yes. That's the body of the moose right there. Pack away. Pack, pack, pack. Pound it down. Oh, I can smell it. Yep. You're going to be a new woman by the time you're done here, Danielle. So what are we doing right here with these buckets of water? What I'm doing is I'm trying to get this solid because a wolverine is smart. They all know this is a fake movie set. <laughs> so we want it to last more than a few seconds. It'll freeze shortly and then we'll Bring the wolverine in here and all hell's gonna break loose. Great. What do you think of this, this wolverine meal? I think it's perfect. Yeah? It looks like Thanksgiving. Come and get it. While you and I see the world through our eyes, wolverines see the world through their nose. The wolverine's sense of smell is outstanding. They can smell one molecule out of five million in the air. Whereas me, I can just smell one in 250,000. That's leagues better than me. They find food using their incredible sense of smell. Wolverines have the ability to sniff out carcasses buried under 20 feet of snow. With so much of their prey being killed in avalanches every year, the wolverines' heightened sense of smell is key to their survival. Are you ready to take a risk? and I will protect you if things go south, because it is a wild and dangerous animal after all. So are we going to let it explore this while we're in its enclosure? We're gonna try. Okay. And I've never ever done this where there's a free roaming wolverine mm -hmm. with anyone other than me. I, I take that back. There was a one person, I won't tell you his name, he tried it, okay. but it only lasted for like 30 seconds, it and got then... bad, it got dangerous. Literally had a dive between him and the animal. Now the wolverine was just curious, but mm -hmm. we can't be sure. But it's okay for me to be here. Well, you know why? <laughs> you know why I feel that way? Why? Because you give off the right kind of frequency. You have a compassion and an insight that I don't see very often in a human being. All right, well, I'm putting a lot of trust in you and a lot of trust in the wolverine. Did you sign the release? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Were you serious though, or was that like just good acting about about no one else ever doing this? No, I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but there's some. <laughs> I had to ask. Are you all ready? I'm all ready. Just get my my gloves on. I'll be good to go. I've got something I want to give you. Oh, what's this? Oh, that is pungent. That's Wolverine lure. Have you ever smelled that before? No, it doesn't smell like anything I've ever smelled in my life. You just put one little speck of that in the center of that moose carcass, and I think we'll get the Wolverine to claim that carcass. And okay. Stick it in the snow right on the top. It's just just dab it in the it snow. in there? All right. This is it. This is the piece de resistance. 
Now, this stuff is made with real wolverine musk. This is going to draw the wolverine down to investigate. And what wolverines do when they have carcasses that, that they want to eat or save for later, they mark it for themselves by spraying it with more musk. So it's going to smell this and say, hey, I'm going to put my stink on it. We want him to come and claim this for himself and then dig in. Okay, Danielle, I'm going to go out and get Jasper and I'm going to bring him over here like you're carrying a child uh, in a car seat and I'm going to go through there and then I'm going to let him go in there and once he's in there, I'm going to summon you to come in with me. Okay, stand right here just in case something goes right there. Stand right there. All right, and I I'm won't gonna... move until you give me the signal. And I will be back. I hope this works. All right, I think we're just about ready to let this guy go. Don't move. Oh! <laughs> Here we go. I hope Jasper likes dinner. Here we go. I'm going in yeah, with it. a wolverine. Okay. Oh. oh, he's going straight for it. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Now Jasper's walk. already exploring that, that moose carcass. I am so happy that this wolverine is comfortable with my presence right now. I feel pretty calm about it myself now that I can see how relaxed Jasper is. Guess it goes both ways, you know? I'm elated. My heart is just, oh, it's, it's pounding out of just sheer excitement. What a beautiful animal. Don't worry, I'm not gonna stand on your moose. It's all yours. Oh my goodness. Oh. Let's see, Steve knows how to speak to this wolverine. He just warned the wolverine to step off because I'm not a meal, <laughs> at least not yet. At over a meter long and about as heavy as a German shepherd, the females are about 30% smaller than the males, but equally as chaotic. These stocky mustelids weigh between 11 and 18 kilograms. Their fur is brown or black with a yellow or gold stripe from their head to their tail. The markings on their faces, necks, and chests are unique to each wolverine. Kind of like hyper-aggressive snowflakes. And they are aggressive. Like really, really, capital A, aggressive. Wolverines are always on the prowl, only taking breaks for naps and mating. The only thing these demon ferrets like more than eating its prey is killing it. The wolverine's ferocity is so legendary that people living out on the land told me that they'd rather run into a polar bear than a wolverine. Crikey! Wolverines can hit speeds of almost 50 kilometers per hour running across the snow. If they ran that fast on a city road, they'd likely get a ticket. They're also great climbers and super strong for their size. Can he dig out the foot? He's got the foot! Oh no! He's got the foot! Having raised several litters of wolverines from birth, Steve has become somewhat of a wolverine whisperer. And in order to be as safe as possible in the enclosure, he taught me to speak wolverine. All right. I hear, I hear him talking now. Okay, so... Oh, he, that's him? Yeah. I can hear him. Yeah. He's excited. Do you yeah. think he can smell the moose? Oh yeah. They can smell frying bacon from 25 miles away in the Arctic if the wind's blowing right. There are certain voices now that I make <laughs> and, and, and vocalizations to, to communicate with the wolverine. And one of them is this. Dow! Go ahead, do it. Dow! And then. Hi! Hi! Louder. Hi! Dow! And then. Hi! Hi! Louder. Hi! I'm over here on this side, and on this side. <laughs> Hi. That's it. And then ha 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 ha. That's it. That's it. Ha 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 ha. Yep. Yep. Okay. Ha ha ha. That's it. Ha ha ha. That's it. Ha ha ha. Hi. Just you got it. Hi. Yeah, see. See. Hi. See? It's coming. Oh, he just did a. He did a front flip. Hi. Hi. 
<laughs> I love Wolverine noises. You hear that? That's moose bone breaking in his teeth. All of their front teeth are extremely sharp and long. All the better for crunching into that frozen flesh. But the teeth at the back of their mouths, their molars, those are built for crunching through bone. A wolverine's third upper molar is actually turned inwards like other mustelids, except theirs is way bigger. And this is designed to help them hold onto and crunch bones much more effectively, especially because most of their meals, like this one, are frozen. So he's grabbing onto that meat and twisting and turning to pull off pieces of frozen flesh. Now, wolverines don't mind at all if their meal is frozen. Frozen meat is what they're built for. In the wild, if you got this close to a wolverine on a carcass, that would be a true miracle. Oh, I bet. You'd have to be, and it might only happen once in a lifetime. Well, he is extremely patient and I'm grateful for that. Oh, that looks like fun. I want to join him with that. I want to roll around on my back in the snow. Wolverines, everything they do, even if they're starving to death in the wild, is about having fun while you're trying to survive. They're comical. They're not a ferocious, nasty animal. Mm -mm. An animal that does have interest in having fun is a sheer sign of intelligence. And it just goes to show just how smart these animals are. While many species in their range get through the winter by hibernating, Wolverines just don't care about the cold. While everyone else is sleeping, the wolverine gets to hunting. This is the other benefit of being able to smell through the snow. They can easily find animals hibernating under the snow and make sure they never wake up again. Don't work hard, work smart. It really doesn't matter if you're dead or alive. Everything looks like a gourmet meal to a wolverine. When they find a moose carcass, they'll often take up residence inside its body, like Han freaking Solo in a Tauntaun. Many of my bush pilot friends in the Arctic, they're flying over, they see where one is in a, a caribou. That's amazing. Or a moose. Yeah, yeah. They get very possessive too. Combine the wolverine's bite, thick hide, and sharp claws with a large dash of brazen confidence, and you've got one deadly predator. The wolverine is so tenacious that it can take down animals up to five times their own size. The wolverine kills its prey with a bite to the neck, which severs its tendons and crushes its throat. But even the kings and queens of chaos aren't impervious to predators. They have to watch out for wolves. Wolverines can take on one, two, even three wolves, but if they're ganged up on by a pack, they can get themselves killed. On the plus side, wolves kill other animals, thereby creating yummy carrion for the wolverine. They have a complicated relationship, to say the least. Wolverines are super solitary and extremely territorial. They're always on a solo quest for food, and only ever stop munching to mate and raise kids. The male's home range is huge and can be up to 620 square kilometers. They mark that territory and communicate with other animals using their anal scent glands. That pungent odor is the reason they've earned nicknames like skunk bear and nasty cat. That's a bit rude. Make fun of their smell all you want, but spreading their stinky musk is how they meet partners. Wolverines are a polygamous species that can mate with any member of the opposite sex living in or overlapping with their territory. Breeding season is between May and August, and the females are the first ones to make a move. After they first meet up, they'll mate for a couple days and then go their separate ways. Females have the ability to delay the implantation of the eggs until as late as the following spring. The actual gestation only lasts 30 to 50 days. Once she's safe and hidden in her den, mom will give birth to three kids. Wolverine dads used to get a bad rap, but recent research suggests that they play a bigger role in raising kids than previously thought. Fathers have been spotted visiting the mom wolverines when they're nursing their young. 
Some dads even take an interest in their offspring when they're older, teaching them how to survive in the wild and even just playing. But let's be real, mom does most of the work. The kits are weaned off her milk at three months old. They'll be full-sized at a year old and reach sexual maturity at age two or three. True symbol of the Arctic wilderness is the wolverine, more so than the polar bear, the grizzly. I never thought, Danielle, that you'd be this, interacting with this wolverine's behavior. This is amazing. Here, touches, touches <gasps> ours. Can I? Go ahead. Oh my God. Oh, it's so soft. All right, there he goes. <laughs> Bye, Jasper. I love you. <laughs> Researchers aren't sure how many wolverines there are in the world. They're so elusive and mysterious. But their numbers took a big hit back when humans used to hunt them for their fur. They're also threatened by global warming. Wolverines need deep mountain snows to den, and scientists believe their habitats will shrink as temperatures rise. So let's fight climate change and protect the wolverines. They'd do the same for us. Actually, on second thought, maybe they wouldn't. They'd probably just let us all die and happily feast on our carcasses. Classic wolverine. So what should we talk about next? What do you say? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya! <laughs> Check this out. If we're lucky, we might even get an episode on Bigfoot. <laughs> You'd watch that, right? Yeah.